In this video, I want to set the record straight. I did a video on this exact topic and some of the feedback that I got on that was basically that some of the information is inaccurate. And honestly, some of the stuff I said in the video was taken out of context a little bit. So I wanna do a new video on this exact subject. I wanna set the record straight. And I wanna point out that I don't know everything, you know, I'm probably one of the first in our industry to admit that. I think that's probably rare in our industry with a lot of the know-it-alls that are out there. I'm still learning, I'm trying to get better. And that's one of the reasons that we have this channel. So that way we can share information, we can help homeowners make better decisions. And if a pro or two catches my content, they learn some of this stuff too. That said, the topic I wanna to talk about is the new refrigerants that are coming out. They are A2L refrigerants. They're mildly flammable. They're not gonna blow up your house because they're mildly flammable. They do require new tools. And so I first want to set the record straight before I get any deeper in this and just say, if you are using tools that are not A2L rated, tools and you're supposed to be then you should be using a2l rated tools okay so i just want to blanket statement this entire video and start out by saying that that if you should be using a an a2l recovery machine and you're not well then you should be okay so let's let's just get that out of the way that's one of the things i said in the last video i made a blanket statement about how you may not need new tools and we're going to talk in just a moment why i kind of said that and set the record straight if you are using Using a tool that's not A2L rated, you should be. It's a safety issue and you should be doing things correctly. So moving on, let's talk about some of the specific tools. Let's talk about why you may not need to get some of them new and hopefully help you if you're a pro or even a homeowner that happens to catch this and you want to make sure everything's being done right at your house, then hopefully this will help you. So one of the reasons I said in the original video that you may not need new tools is the fact that some of the tools you've been buying, so if you've bought new gauges or new recovery machine in the last, say, two years or so, they've known that these are coming. They've known that the A2L refrigerants are on the way, and they knew to go ahead and start making tools that would be compatible and that they would be rated for that. So that's one of the reasons that I think that you don't need to purchase new tools. And in a lot of cases, if you go to the website of the manufacturer for that tool, you might be able to look it up, look up that model number and find out, hey, is this tool actually good? Am I good to go here? Again, this may change. So I may end up having to take this video down. That's one of the things that I'm finding as someone that does trainings for other pros in our industry, that things are happening really quick. That things, even though we knew these refrigerants are on the way that every day something is new right now the big thing we're watching is the actual education side of things and certifications during the making of this video if the, you had an epa cfc certification you had the 608 card saying that you can handle refrigerant they're saying at this point that you're going to be able to purchase and handle these refrigerants. However, many believe that that could change any day now that they will set forth new parameters. And if you're going to be purchasing and handling these refrigerants, then you need to have some sort of certification saying that you can handle flammable refrigerants. But now we're going into a whole nother topic. Let's just stay off of that for now. Just realize that things do change, that things are happening fast. I've never seen our industry change this fast. I've never seen so many new things, so many changes constantly hitting our industry. And not that I've been in this industry for a century or anything, but I've been in it for a while. And I was in it for the transition from R22 to 410. And I can tell you that it was a little less crazy. It was a little less intense. There was a little bit of an overlap there that they were making less units. And then they switched to kind of like a what we call dry charge units, where the unit would have nitrogen in it instead of the refrigerant. You would have to add the refrigerant. And then eventually there came a day where you just simply could not buy it anymore. And through all of that, you could then buy 410A systems. They were out and there was a lot of overlap there. With this, there's going to be some intense, quick changes pretty quick. So let's dive into these tools. One of the tools that just automatically comes off the top of the head is our gauges, right? So if you're using analog gauges, they're saying that you do need to use an A2L compatible version of those gauges. If you have digital gauges, then you will probably just need to download a new firmware. Just 
just doing an update to your software that you may be okay with those digital gauges. Now, again, I don't wanna get painted into a corner again. That could change. They may come out and say, no, you can't use those either. What's interesting with some of these tools like gauges is I have friends that have been working with R290, which is an A3 refrigerant, very, very flammable. And they've been using some of these tools for a long time. So I think that's one of the reasons I got painted into the corner in the last video is I was making blanket statements based on experience. And I don't want to be taken out of context. I certainly don't want to be held liable for misinformation that if someone at a organization or company that does all of this says something contradictory to what I say in this video, obviously I'm going to defer to them. They're the ones that set the rules. They're the ones that set the parameters. And so again, if you have gauges, they need to be A2L compatible, may need a firmware update to your digital gauges. I wanted to take a quick break from the video and thank the sponsor of this video, AccuTrack. Many homeowners are frustrated with HVAC systems, leaking refrigerant, and the cost to repair those leaks. But HVAC technicians are equally frustrated when they can't seem to find those leaks. AccuTrack has amazing leak detectors for technicians searching for those leaks. They can detect any type of compressed gas, including refrigerants, nitrogen, air, etc. They detect both vacuum and pressure leaks and are a effective in gas saturated areas under windy conditions. AccuTrack never needs calibration, different tips for different gases, and best of all, it's made right here in the USA. I'll put a link to AccuTrack in the description of this video. Make sure you use the promo code HVAC guide for a discount. And now back to the video. Charging hoses, they're saying during the making of this video that you need to have a different hose for each refrigerant. Again, I've got friends that probably have broken that rule for years. I've always done residential, so there wasn't a whole lot of options. And as long as you were purging everything the way you were supposed to and flushing line sets and all the stuff that we're supposed to do properly, it's normally never been a problem. But they're saying with these new ATL refrigerants, you need to be doing things up to snuff. You need to have separate hoses for each and every refrigerant refrigerant no mixing and matching. The next one is vacuum pumps. One of the things I talked about in the last video that I'll just touch on again is if you're installing a new system, brand new line sets and all of that, the system and the copper line sets and even the vacuum pump itself, it doesn't really know what refrigerant you're using. So pulling a vacuum on a system like that, it shouldn't really matter, right? That the vacuum pump doesn't know what kind of refrigerant you're introducing to that system. But one of the things that was pointed out after I made that video is the fact that you could be making a repair and you're now pulling a vacuum on a system that already had A2L refrigerants in it. And I actually think that's a valid point. As I said, I don't know everything. That's something that you need to be aware of, that you need to be concerned. So if you're going to be using a vacuum pump on an A2L refrigerant, moving forward, you do need to be using a tool with one of these DC motors or the spark proof versions of these tools that also goes for recovery machines again a lot of these tools you may already have a tool that's got all of this but just look into that make sure you're using compatible versions of that tool and the rest of these tools i'm going to move through pretty quickly the refrigerant recovery cylinders they are basically just saying look you need to be labeling them you need to make sure you're not mixing refrigerants that's nothing new but it is something we're going to point out refrigerant cylinders will have left hand threads we've talked about that in other videos they'll also have have designations with red markings and so on scales that we weigh the refrigerant with they're saying that there is no change you don't need to get a brand new scale but i can already tell after the first video that probably might change right they'll probably come out and say oh josh is saying you don't need a scale and what about all these problems that could happen and what about this what about okay got it but during the recording of this video the powers that be are saying that the scale we have on hand should be fine refrigerant leak detectors this is another one that you know, I feel like there might be a little gray area, but to eliminate the gray area, I'll just say it needs to be an A2L compatible version. You know, we'll just say that up front. One of the things that is pointed out from time to time is a lot of these A2L refrigerants are, especially R32, is actually a part of some of the refrigerants that we've used in the past. And so is it possible that your old refrigerant leak detector will pick up those refrigerants? I think it's possible, but it should be noted that moving forward, 
go ahead and get one that we know is compatible. We know it has the sensors to pick up those new refrigerants. A lot of guys are also saying that they're going to be using these as a personal detection device, that they're going to wear it on their person, kind of like a lot of guys do when they're trying to sense carbon monoxide, when they're working on furnaces. A lot of the things we've done in the past, like making sure you're working in a well-ventilated area, is going to be paramount now, right? They're no longer saying it's a good idea. They're saying, hey, it's required that you need to be working in a well-ventilated area. Certain things need to be at least 10 feet or more away. Other refrigerants need to be even further away, like A3 refrigerants and things like that. Bottom line, you need to be using tools that are A2L compatible, including your refrigerant leak detector. Finally, your fire extinguisher, making sure that it is designed to put out chemical fires and all that good stuff. CO2 or class B powder type is what they're currently recommending at this time. And ultimately just making sure that you're abiding by the standards set forth in our industry. I think a lot of times guys in our industry will know how to do things properly, but they'll cut corners and they'll do things that are maybe a little less safe and they'll get by, right? They'll actually be okay. That will Will become the precedent that instead of just bending the rules, sometimes they start to bend the rules all the time. And then that's when you can open the door for things to happen. I think certainly better to be more safe than you actually need to be. You know, these refrigerants aren't super flammable, but they are mildly flammable. So be super safe about it, overkill, than the other way around. Not being safe enough, I'd certainly much rather be more safe than I need to be. So making sure you're doing all these things properly, making sure that you're working in well-ventilated areas, making sure that you're using a ventilation fan if needed, and finally, making sure that you're using the tools that are designed for the job. I hope this helps. The powers that be literally just maybe a year or two ago when these O2L refrigerants first started coming out and a lot of guys were kicking and screaming about it saying, oh great, now I've got to run out and buy all new tools. They were saying, no, 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 you don't. Well, now they're kind of saying, yeah, you do. <laughs> you do need to run out and buy all new tools, you know? So again, some of the tools you might already have on hand, you might be okay. Make sure you look those up, make sure they're A2L compatible. If it doesn't have all the crazy lettering on it that designated as such, maybe go ahead and write it on there. So that way that folks know that you are doing things properly. Homeowner sees your tank having markings on it saying that it is rated for the new refrigerants. They'll know that you are doing everything that you're supposed to. All that said, I hope it helps. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we talk about a website that you can look and make sure that the new chemical or refrigerant you're using is the right one. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.